Now, you've heard talk all day long about this World War II memorial, and you should have. And you should have. And now we know, as a matter of fact, that the President's Office of Management and Budget, the Office of Management and Budget, reports directly to the President of the United States. And often the director of OMB becomes his chief of staff. The Office of Management and Budget, which is in the White House, in the Executive Office building, where I used to work, ordered the Park Service to close the World War II Memorial. Ordered it to close the World War II Memorial, even though it was privately built and funded because it's on federal land. The President's direct report according to Carol Johnson, who's with the Park Service, at least for now. Remember when Obama had those pictures of him meeting with cabinet secretaries in the cabinet room in the White House? We're trying to figure out how to manage the shutdown of the government. Let me tell you what he told them. In so many words, punish the American people. Punish them. Like the good old days, you know, when I was a when I, a, a street organizer, a rabble rouser. This Oval Office doesn't change the man. He is what he is. Protester, a marcher, an obstructor. Shut that business down. Raise holy hell. Promote anarchy. But this time he's got all kinds of power and is seizing power he doesn't even have. Charles Johnson, this you need to listen to. Charles Johnson writing at the Daily Caller. He just posted a piece there. And the title is Monuments and Memorials Remained Open During the Previous Shutdown. And by the way, I'm getting emails from a number of people. For instance... There's a private park in Great Falls, Virginia, near the CIA that the federal government hasn't funded, hasn't been involved in, in any respect since 1980. The federal government shut it down because of some relationship to the federal government. Just shut it down. I got an email from... uh, Newt Gingrich. And he indicated that over there at the Mount Vernon estate, which is wholly private, there's a little piece of the parking lot that's on federal land. They blocked the parking lot. So Charles Johnson writes in the Daily Caller, although President Obama claims he can't avoid shutting down public sites and monuments, war memorials were in fact kept open during the 1995-96 government shutdowns. The administration's decision to barricade the Lincoln Memorial marks the first time in its history the memorial's been totally off-limits to visitors during a shutdown. We've had 17 shutdowns prior to this. Only this time is the Lincoln Memorial shut down. During the Clinton-era shutdown, World War II vets kept the Pearl Harbor Memorial open. This administration has also balked at efforts by non-governmental groups to maintain access to public sites. You get it? Quote, despite the federal government shutdown and an unrepaired sign that reads Arizona Memorial Closed, tourists are still getting expert commentary about the World War II Memorial at Par Harbor, wrote the Associated Press on January 1, 1996. It's our way of helping to preserve the history of this place, said Bob Kinsler, president of the Aloha chapter of the Pearl Harbor Survivors. He told the AP at the time. But barricades went up in the national parks across Washington, D.C. Wednesday, including the Lincoln Memorial. This, too, was unprecedented. A photo of the Lincoln Memorial during the government shutdown of 1995 shows the Information booth closed by, but but tourists still had access to the grounds. 
And why shouldn't they? Why should open area memorials and parks be open? And look at all the federal personnel at the Park Service and other, and other folks being used to close them. To guard them, not to protect them, but to keep you out. You own those damn parks. And you own those memorials. And this is why I said at the beginning of the program, we need to take a lot of these facilities, these entities, these parks and memorials, out of the hands of the federal government, because if they're going to be used to blackmail us, if they're going to be used to extort us, to punish us, because we dare to object what this president is doing, then they are not being handled by the right stewards, are they? Are they? Obama doesn't give a damn about those World War II vets any more than he gives a damn about those 200 kids with cancer. That's right, I said it. Neither does Harry Reid. And not only that, oh, there's so much more. You know what? I'll pace myself. And I'm going to get to this. I want to say this loud and clear to the people on Capitol Hill who are listening. To this administration. You lay one damn hand on one of those World War II vets at that memorial, I'll bring half a million people to that damn memorial. You got that? I'm sitting here stewing thinking about this. Playing these damn games? You will ignite a movement in this country like you've never seen before. The Biker Patriot Army. Veterans from all over the country. Every single war and battle in this country. Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever. I'll be damned if one president, with his feet up on the desk in the Oval Office, with his smirk on his face, looking at his golf cart, I'll be damned if this president or anybody else is going to shut down that World War II memorial. Period. These men are in their 80s and 90s. So let me repeat. You lay one hand on one of those men and arrest them for going to their memorial, which they fought for, which was not paid by you, damn it, was paid by the American people. We will come out of every town and city in this nation. We will come out of every county, at both coasts, both borders, and we will march on Washington against your tyranny. You've been warned. You have been warned. Oh, shut down the government. Shove it. 